Carrington, Mass. Great Carrington, Mass. Go. Cool. So yeah, tell me again about your story and all the ex expeditions. Well, we don't want to go through all the expeditions. Okay. <laughs> Basically, I think the story you want to hear was about the Stanley bottle that's at the bottom of the ocean at the North Pole. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So first, the scenario of how the bottle came about. Uh, in 1980, uh, we had done a skydive over the North Pole. And in uh, preparation for that, a friend of mine had given me a Stanley thermos bottle to stay warm with my name basically etched on the outside of the bottle. Oh, which cool. Was, which was very cool. Yeah. So I proceeded to use that on a number of expeditions thereafter. And it had been with me for a while. And in 1982, in uh, May of 1982, after I'd done a, a couple of other high Arctic and North Pole expeditions, I had an opportunity to guide uh, a very quick trip that was up the North Pole, which was basically for a, a group of tourists that went up to drink champagne and, and caviar at the North Pole. Awesome. Uh, through a commercial company uh, called Society Expeditions at that time. And as the leader of the trip, I had my thermos bottle with me. We had two Twin Otter aircraft with skis. We flew up to the North Pole on May 28, 1982. And as we were coming in to land at the North Pole, on basically a frozen lead, as we started to uh, decelerate and stop the aircraft, we broke through the ice. And as we broke through the ice, the aircraft went into the ice, and the prop on basically the left-hand prop of the aircraft started chopping up the ice, and obviously we flooded the airplane. So the airplane yeah. basically pancaked down on the ice, uh, and we didn't have time to get everything out. We got most of the survival gear out, and I happened to be able to grab my thermos bottle, which at that <laughs> time had coffee and Kahlua in it, and we made pretty much everything except uh, the survival rifle, which we weren't really overly concerned about because nobody's actually seen bears that far north. Right. Yeah, yeah. Degrees north. Well, in the process of landing the aircraft, one person is, is landing the aircraft, the co-pilot, person in that seat was talking to the backup aircraft. So they knew we had broken through the ice and some of the aircraft, so we initiated uh, our contingency emergency procedures. But in the meantime, after the airplane had started to pancake and set on the wing, uh, we had set up a little survival camp and we drank what was left of the uh, Kahlua and coffee in the Stanley uh, thermos. Right. So I then took it and grabbed the small American flag that one of the people on the aircraft had and I took the flag, cleaned the, the Stanley bottle out, and put the flag inside the bottle. And then I wrote a small note that said to any 21st century archaeological student who finds this aircraft, it sunk at the North Pole May 28, 1982, and tossed it back into the airplane. That's awesome. So as the airplane sunk, and then eventually went down 13,340 feet to the bottom of the ocean at the North Pole, inside yeah. of it was the Stanley bottle with the American flag and the note. Well, cool. that really didn't uh, make much of a story, quite honestly, for quite a number of years, until the Russians came up and then claimed the North Pole by taking a small submersible down uh, a number of years back and planting a Russian flag at the North Pole, at which point I got on the internet and said, wait, time out, you can't do that, there's already an American flag down there inside of a Stanley thermos model inside of a sunk Twin Otter aircraft. That is awesome. So that's, that's the story. Well, thank you very much for sharing, I appreciate it, it's a wonderful story. Thank you very no much. You're welcome.